Hello everybody, my name is Yuri Sudo and I am a science producer working at the NHK. Uh, thank you for joining the session and um, I also like to thank Elsie for giving me this opportunity to talk to you all. So I am a science producer working at the NHK, which is uh, the Japan's public broadcaster, also known as Japan Broadcasting Corporation. I am executive producing and commissioning a weekly science slot called Cosmic Front which is uh, aired on our network's HD and 4K channel. Uh, but for now, I am here working from my home and recording, recording this in my living room. So I don't have access to all those 4K, fancy 4K, high definition, um, uh, state of the art filming equipment. I just have my iPhone here on my desk. So please bear that. In fact, we all might have to stay home for another couple months. So we have to improvise and improvising at home means using whatever I have at home. So I brought this here, which is my kids uh, chalkboard. And I'll give you some notes and charts so that it will be easier, easier for you to understand what I'm trying to explain here. And here is the title, scientists and producers Happy marriage. You see this? You read this? Okay. So, this is what I'm going to talk to you. Scientists and producers, how we can be collaborators. And so the first thing that we might talk, we want, what well, I, I want to talk to, to you about is producer. What is a producer? And I introduced myself as a science producer. What is this? What is a science producer? So, um, we're part of the media. And when you talk about the media, when you think about the media, what do you think about? Or who do you think about? Is it a news reporter? Might be. A news reporter and a science producer is kind of similar, but it's not the same. And I'd like to make, distinguish these, the, the, these two so that you'll better understand what I'm trying to, to tell you about now. So um, NHK is a, it's a huge entity. We have like um, 10,000 employees and we do have a news division. And my, some of my colleagues work in that, that division, the news division, and I work together with them uh, oftentimes, but I consider myself as a science producer, not a news uh, reporter or a journalist in that sense. So what is the difference? Um, uh, what is the difference opposed to a bona fide news reporter or news journalist, the science producer? In order to tell you about that, I'm going to use this again, but in a different way. Look at this. This has a whiteboard on the back. I bought this for my son for last Christmas and you're using it. So this one, hope you can see me. Okay, and here's the news reporter and the science uh, producer. What's the difference? News reporter, where do you see? You can see into here, all right? One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a chart. So the time frame that we're talking about, it's a little bit different for, for a news reporter or sometimes it's an investigative journalism. They talk about the present Tense. It's about breaking news. It's about now, what is happening now. And it has to go out uh, in public now, in the present. But we look in the future tense. That means like several months, several years from now, whenever we have a story, our output would not be tomorrow's paper headlines. 
it would be a, a film or a program that will be produced and going to be on air at least a couple months, maybe some several years, two, three years from now. So that's the difference. Um, it, it, difference about the timeline. And then we have a goal that is different. The goal for a news, breaking news, is also, it's about speed. In investigative journalism, it's about lane. You know, you have to be fast. It, who, who gets the breaking news? That's about news. And investigative journalism also kind of fights for social justice. So it has somebody to blame or something to blame. But a science producer, our goal is kind of different. It is to inspire, inspire the people and to educate. So we're not interested in speed, but we ultimately we want to inspire the society. That, so that's coming back to our mission to communicate science to the public. What can we do to inspire the people with the science stories or how we can educate with those scientific facts? That's our goal. That's what we'll be seeking for. And the role of these two, it's more like a judge. Especially for investigative journalism, uh, they will fight, for, as I said, fight for social justice, uh, for equity sometimes. So it's more like a, the role will be more like a judge. But a science producer is a collaborator. It's a collaborator. Uh, collaborator collaborating with the scientists or even it could be a funder. So this is how we work differently. We can be co-researchers, co collaborators, or we can uh, also work as a facilit facilitator to bring in different stakeholders or even different scientists, bring in them together to create a big project, which is a film eventually, or a funding uh, role. That is that um, we sometimes, we oftentimes, in order to be discreet for several years, we, uh, we come up with an NDA, a non-disclosure. When we contact the scientists, we, eventually we have to go into some, some of the details that are not yet published. So in that sense, we oftentimes uh, agree on a non-disclosure so that we will withhold that outlet, the news outlet, until uh, we, until the scientists have a scientific paper published or a certain time uh, that is agreed upon. And also, we commission some studies. So it can be a commissioned study for you. And in that sense, we can be a funder. In a co-research, again, uh, we can be the funding uh, uh, element of the co-research or we can um, be, uh, con the contribution can be not just cash contribution, but also an in-kind contribution providing our facilities. So this is how it's different. We're not gonna, so you don't have to be worried about it. When you talk to a science producer, if, if the story is gonna get out to the public on tomorrow's paper, we're, that's not gonna happen. We're looking for the future and finding a story that can inspire. And we'd like to collaborate with you and, or maybe fund you to, to get the ultimate goal. But you don't have to be worried if it's going to leak or something like that. Uh, we're going to be friends, not foe, in that sense. So uh, I'm, this is not about which is good or bad, which is better. Um, my colleagues work in the news, news uh, division, so I, um, I, I admire their job as well. It's just the difference. And I'd like you to know the difference so that it is important for you to understand that 
when you talk about the media, it's not just about news reporters. There are science producers who want to work hand in hand with you for several months, maybe years, to co-create some kind of value that we can provide together to the public. So this is the reason that I wanted to, to show you this chart. And um, it might be better for me to, to give you some examples of the, the past projects we worked with scientists for you to better understand this, the difference. So I'll give you some examples. The first example will be um, about, uh, it's called the Scan Pyramids Project. It was a, a collaboration with a Japanese scientists and French scientists working together to scan through a pyramid. It took three years in the making. It's three years, so it's definitely the future sense, future tense. J'avais 5 à 6 degrés d'écart entre la moyenne du mur et ces pierres-là qui sont plus chaudes. Et ce matin, j'ai encore 3 degrés de plus. Je ne comprends pas. Là, il y a quelque chose derrière. C'est certain. Okay, so this film was a co-production between a uh, French institute and production company and NHK. It was a co the film was a co-production between these th three parties. The scientists involved, there were several of them, Japanese f scientists, French scientists, and we, NHK, signed a co-research agreement with the Japanese institutes, the scientists. And uh, we were funding the field research including the travel costs, etc. So that is the collaboration part, the funding part as well. The, the collaboration was a truly scientific one. NHK, NHK has, a, has a production team. We are a production team, but we do have um, team members who are like a top-notch A-level computer graphic artists. They are the, the, the best in the world, I, I must say. 
and uh, they will be able to create 3D CGI, computer generated images. And they can create those 3D images, computer graphics, from the binary data uh, collected through the field work. So when you go out in the field, they had these, these digital digits and numbers and uh, our computer graphic artists kind of rendered them into a 3D image, eventually creating an image about the unknowing, unknown void inside the pyramid. So that is a true scientific co collaboration in that sense. Uh, the CGI is an essential part, not only to the film, but also to the science itself, to the scientific finding itself. So the CGI artist, our CGI artist, is listed as a collaborator in the academic paper itself. So um, this is a true collaboration, not just the funding, not just um, talking about uh, the, the present tense, but it, it took three years. We waited until the scientific paper was published. It took like three years. So what we did was we created the film, like 99% was already done. And once we uh, got the, the notice that the public, the paper was accepted, Nature, then the next week we aired it on the air. So that's how it worked. We're gonna withhold that, uh, the, the, the transmission until we get a green light from you, the scientists. And um, we, this is about the future. And it ta this is like a, a mystery for thousands of years. And a scientist can change that story. It's truly fascinating. Using this, this, the latest technology or science to uh, rewrite the story of the pyramids. That is a, an inspirational story itself and it's educational, of course. So that's how it worked. And also we were the facilitator, uh, I didn't have a facilitator, but we can work as a facilitator as well, to bring in not only the Egyptian authorities, the Ministry of Antiquities, but also the French scientists and institutes. So at the end of the day, we had enough cross-reference and double-checking to validate the outcome and the, the, the increase the plausibility of the theory um, within the team. We had all these assets and the, the, the assi different scientists working on the same thing, bringing them all together in Egypt to work on one, one, um, one topic. So this is the type of the happy marriage that I'm talking about when a producer can work with the scientists, not just you know going to your lab saying, hello, I want to film this and that and for my evening news. It's not like that. Uh, we were working side by side for three years, going to France, Egypt, Japan, uh, waiting for the, f for the paper to be published. It took a really long time to, be, to get that published, and we waited and waited and waited. Uh, but that maximized the impact. We, for us as well, we want that paper out for like, uh, like, like PR reasons. And when the paper is out, it's going to be all over the news, the news. But we have an hour long story that is embedded within the expedition itself, uh, behind the scenes stories. It's going to come out right uh, on the week that the, the, the news breaks. So this is how we work. We are different from news. It's not breaking. It's going to take a lot of time, but we need to do that like three, four years before it's gonna happen. Um, okay, so that's about the, the Scam Pyramids project. I'd like to show you another project example where we collaborated with the Japanese space agency, JAXA, on the spacecraft Hayabusa 2. NHK and JAXA signed an agreement to create a real-time computer graphic rendering system to actually sh sh show what the spacecraft is doing right now by receiving all the flight data and generating the precise, accurate CGIs. So take a look. It's an audacious plan, seemingly impossible. Launch a spacecraft to a nearby asteroid 180 million miles away, land safely on top, take samples, and return unharmed to Earth with a souvenir from space. But yesterday, 
the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft came one step closer to completing that plan as it successfully descended onto the asteroid Ryugu before collecting the first of three samples from this pristine object. This latest triumph from JAXA, Japan's space agency, wasn't as easy as its daring success might make it seem. Unforeseen hazards not only delayed the mission, but also endangered its success. After a three and a half year journey through space, on June 27, 2018, Hayabusa 2 arrived at its destination. The carbon-rich, half-mile-wide asteroid orbits the Sun between Earth and Mars. And this primordial near-Earth object could one day unravel the clues of our early solar system. The Ryugu is believed to contain the uh, organic matter and hydraulic minerals, very important ingredient of life. Technologically, it's a sample return mission, so not only going to that asteroid, but get there and going back from the asteroid to the Earth. So it's a round trip mission. So again, this takes years and years in the making. Um, it takes years to get to, to the asteroid, of course, but um, the the agreement has to be done before everything is going to happen, obviously. The ownership of these images are co-owned, meaning that the scientists can also make use of the CGI themselves. When you think of communicating science to the public, you might want to do that yourselves. And this is a great advantage to have these images as a key communication tool. So um, again, our computer graphic teams were part of that uh, co-research and uh, receiving all the binary data, uh, we were able to create those real-time CGI's. So that's how we worked together on that. Same thing, but in a bigger scale, like a, uh, millions of kilometers away. So that's, those are the two examples that I wanted to show. There are a lot more that we were, we've been doing, and not just in space, but uh, uh, there are several ways to do that. But to do this, we'll go back to the chart and, and think based on this. But uh, so the future, it's several years. So rewinding back before everything is going to happen, when you're going to publish a paper, imagine that several years before that, we'll have to have uh, the first meeting. Obviously, the timeline has to be um, something that's going to go public in a few years, though we're not. I've said we're not like an investigative journalist or news division. We are um, obliged to the secrecy. Um, we're not going to leak that information unless we have your permission. So rest assured, it's going to be okay. But um, so when you already have that conclusion and when the paper is going to be published in a few weeks, that's too late for us to, to um, be a collaborator. Uh, we can just uh, show a little snippet of it in some of our news, but we're not going to be able to create a feature length uh, film or a big project based on that. So that's how it works. Again, our mission is to communicate science to the public. And um, the first thing that we're going to talk about, that I'm going to talk about, the science producer is going to talk about, is um, communicating science to the public. What is the significance of your story? What is the significance of the story to the audience? Not just the scientific significance, but also the significance to the society. This is going to be the question that I will be asking, and it is my job to find the answer to it. You may uh, be aware of that, especially this, the, the scientific significance, but when we talk about the impact to the society, we want to brainstorm together with you what it means, what you're doing, what it means to the society, to our society. And that's the fundamental question uh, underlying the, the, the film that we're gonna produce, finding the significance to the public. How can we tell this story in a fascinating way to attract more than just 
academics. Uh, this is how the producers think. But uh, this is also your way in to make a stronger connection with the society. You will have to talk about how you can tell this scientific find, sci uh, finding uh, in, a, in a story in a more fascinating, attractive way to uh, not just the people in, in your inner circle, but uh, people who are uh, not experts. So in order to do that, I may ask some lowbrow questions, not just those highbrow questions that are comfortable for you. This is because I want to find out the connection, how we can connect it to a broader audience and uh, bring the, the people into to, to, uh, viewing the, this show. You know, um, when you're interested in the, in, the, in the science itself, people will come. But our job is to communicate science to the public. To the public means to the people who are not necessarily interested in what you're doing right now. Uh, this requires kind of a um, metacognition and we'll have to brainstorm. This is the first step of the, of the conversation, two or three years before that big uh, paper is going to be published. Of course, you will have to educate me, uh, telling what you are doing and trying to achieve because I'm not a specialist. You have to make me understand in the first step and uh, make me fascinated. And then I will find the way to tell the story in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a stronger way. So that's the first step. What is the significance of the story to the public, to the society? The next step is about the, the structure, how we can collaborate, structuring the collaboration. It is, is, is it a simple research, film sharing of activities, or can we bring in a third party working as a facilitator? Can we help in another way? Um, or can we provide our assets like uh, computer graphic artists or our um, 4K or 8K filming technology to make use of it uh, in, its, in uh, to help the science itself. Um, the computer graphic CGI's in the case of the, the scan pyramids and the Hayabusa 2 was an example, but there's another example, I don't have a clip to it right now, but there's another, another example we handed the 8K, 8K camera to a scientist going underwater to film microbes. And uh, when you dive, when, when, if you're a diver, you, you understand, but when you dive underwater, you won't have that precise kind of uh, image uh, with your goggles on. Um, but if you film underwater with an 8K camera coming up, with the, with the material, you will be able to um, see more precisely what is happening underwater. So that's how we helped uh, a scientist uh, discover some things that he'd never been able to see himself because it has a higher resolution than when you see with your naked eyes underwater. So the structure of the co collaboration depends on the topic or the players involved and we can talk about how we can do that itself. And the final step is exit strategy, your scientific paper in our special program and the promotional plans. We can talk about that later. And also the budgets, how much you need to achieve this and how we can help the funding. So we are, um, at, as I said, we're our friends, not foes. We're teammates or partners. And we were talking about a happy marriage. And marriage, of course, in real life is not just about living happily ever after. Uh, we need effort and de determination, uh, the effort to understand each other and trying to love each other. And uh, I can hope, I, I really hope that I can do that with you. Um, so that's it for now. Thank you very much for joining the session. And I'm looking forward to having a chat with you during the Q&A sessions. Uh, this is a, a friendly reminder that this is a closed session. So please do not, um, please have that in mind. And if you have any questions, you can ask me directly during the Q&A. Um, so thank you again and see you later. Bye.